Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokium here. Welcome back to Aim Higher, the series where we watch your games, your replays, your Wi-Fi battles, your whatever, and we commentate, talk about what was good, talk about what could have been better, and you know, it's it's fun because I get to learn and I get to see my subscribers battles and hopefully those that play get to learn something too. Or uh, even just like, you know, so see some cool stuff. So if you guys would like to submit, go to my website, Pokemon.com. Click on the Aim Higher link and there's just a whole thing right here where you can easily, easily submit uh, your battles. Just make sure you pay attention to the rules. So, you guys submit a lot every single week. Um, there's about 300 battles I got to go through. Uh, so, what I've decided is, and I think I touched on it last time, but uh, we're going to be doing some of these on stream as well. So, the ones that don't make the videos, uh, I'll be doing streams. Uh, maybe if I don't do one tonight, because I think I might be doing some streaming with my boys tonight. Uh, if I don't do one tonight, you guys can see it maybe Saturday or Sunday uh, where we'll just be going through all your replays and watching them live. I'm not going to port that over to YouTube because I have an entire week to record this video, so I'm not just going to take that. But uh, again, follow me on twitch.tv slash pokegame if you guys care. But this one's pretty excited for his game from Horizon, and it's a high ladder UU game. I really do love the UU tier, and it's just so wild to me to see all these Pokemon here. Literally all of these besides the blade have been OU and even OU staples at a point so it's really interesting to see how a power creep has changed also guys my apron is done on the 24th so if you guys want to pick one up the link is down below it does ship worldwide um also if you come to the stream i'll show it off because i have i have one <laughs> and g feels 30 percent off now it is an energy drink so obviously be careful and be aware you know don't be a kid uh, it's not no don't be a kid don't be uh, be an agent type of thing no i mean like this is not for kids right make sure you're aware of how much uh, caffeine you're taking and it's like soda and all that stuff so you want to be aware of it it's not like soda it's, it's an energy trick um but anyway they have a 30 percent off code with code aim and i personally like the hydration line because it has no calories no sugar no caffeine um i like the strawberry lemonade if you want to try out a flavor and we're on our way to our own shaker so we got this first game like i said it's a yu yu game quite a few games here and i'll be taking a break in between and then i'm going to find some more games because there's a lot of games but we got a huge game and this is really cool because i believe this is specs keldeo uh it's scarf in the poke base the horizon gave me but there's no freaking way it's scarf based on some of the damage that it did when i was looking at this game so uh keldeo is a giant threat just like terrakion is a giant threat from the opponent however the difference here is that keldeo is borderline uncounterable uh why because if keldeo is in versus something like rotom and click surf it will 2 it KO everything bar uh, Kyurem, which if it's Specs, Stealth Rock can deal with from Rhyperior. Or, um, and if it clicks Secret Sword versus everything else, you know, a 2 it KOs or Oko's a lot. So, Keldeo is a giant throw on, on this side. So, that's something that Horizon should be uh, working on getting in because whenever it gets in versus a Pokemon, it's guaranteed faster than, uh, which we'll be able to see based on Calyx and things like that. Uh, the um, It just gets a kill. So that's Keldeo is phenomenal here, especially because like the only mon it has to hit Hydro Pump versus besides Mew, which you can like Scald or Surf to a KO, is the Blade, and the Blade has no guard, so it's not like you even have to risk that, so that's very important. Likewise though, Terrakion is a giant threat to this side. Now we don't know what this Terrakion is based on team composition. Uh, I would say it might be Rocks, but Mew could be Rocks as well. It could also be Choice Band, if it's Choice Band, just as big of a threat. However, it's not as much of a threat because <clears throat> the Close Combat Switchings are really good. You got three resist right here down in the middle. You have priority bullet punch to be able to deal with that. And Rhyperior can come in on Stone Edge and just shrug them off. And Rhyperior actually comes in on Rotom as well. Celesteel it to an extent. And uh, even the Blade. So, like that Mon can get up rock. So, I, I think you definitely want to get in Keldeo as many times as possible when it comes to this. Obviously, be scared of Kyurem because Specs Kyurem is a threat regardless of Scizor. Uh, and I love the, uh, the way the opponent is overwhelmed with threats like one two just giant offensive presences that they break for each other right and ice beam on scissor means that choice ban or terrakion or even like scarf terrakion to it kills the choice ban terrakion knocks it out after specs ice beam but yeah getting scissor getting caldeo click surf click hydro pump click secret sword that's how i would start this off so i want to see how they lead it uh they led as well if i'm looking at this team i think that mew is phenomenal here it's knockoff fast mew so if it's fast mew that means it's only two pokemon that can be fast in it Terrakion, and then Mew can speed type. So even just one Pokemon. Or I guess random Scarfers as well. And it's Taunt, Knockoff, Spike, Soft Boil. So while it doesn't have the annoyance of like Will-O-Wisp to stop the opponent and wear them down like their physical threats, like the Blade, Terrakion, uh, just the Knockoff in general is really nice. And the Spike's damage is going to be really key for uh, the Scizor, which is Metal Coat, 
uh, dealing with Terrakion. Uh, I believe you need one layer of spike to knock it out with Medical uh, Bullet Punch. It might be two layers of spike that you need at that point. But yeah, let's see how this goes. So I'm using the lead. Uh, makes a lot of sense, like I said. This is a taunt, knockoff, softball lead. Now, while it can't do too much to Celesteela, it can at least taunt it and stop it from leeching around. And in terms of Celesteela, like I said, uh, Scalds from Keldia are going to hurt or Surf, depending on Hydro Bumps. Secret Swords too. Tentacruel can burn it as well, and if it goes for Leech Seed, they have Liquid Ooze as an ability, so it actually won't be recovering. And um, all in all, this is like a, a pretty annoying threat to the team, just because defensively it takes hits, but like Scissor U-turns all the time. So uh, you definitely want to knock it off first. I agree completely with that play. That stops uh, the Meteor Beam set with power from doing something. This gets rid of Leftovers for longevity and limits the Bulu and Scissor switches that Celestia can do. Obviously, they do get off a nice little Leech Seed over here. Now, from this turn, you could go for the Taunt. Or you could just go hard into Tentacruel. Tentacruel is a good play too. It takes the Heavy Slam coming in and can threaten with a Scald Burn. I also like two Spike here potentially for wearing down Kiram if it's not Heavy Duty Boots, Mew, and Terrakion. So this is a decent double. As we do see Mew come out and we do see the Scald come out. So it's just trying to get the burn as they do get the burn on Mew. This is actually pretty big because if Tentacruel is burnt, that means it's Black Sludge is gone. Which means that when Kiram comes in, it doesn't even have to click Freeze Dry. It can just click Specs Ice Beam and uh, do damage to basically everything. Like Kiram is a massive threat. But Specs Ice Beam is something that will 2 a KO Mew. Whereas Freeze Dry wouldn't uh, at full. So that's just something to keep in mind there. So that burn was actually pretty important. And uh, Tentacruel, like I said, can always come in on Celesteela regardless of being burnt, but it just means they wear it down even quicker. So we do see Mew come in on Mew as we see the knockoff come out here. And uh, Mew is, like I said, a relatively safe play. You're never going to risk Terrakion because you want your choice banned. Uh, we do see a taunt come out on Celesteela. So this is nice because you can actually take an opportunity to get up your spike. And that's exactly what Horizon is going to do. And that spike is going to you know, make all the difference, especially because Mew is on that timer. And again, we talked about that Terrakion roll. And even weakening the blade for Specs Hydro Pump from Caldeo. Like that spike makes the difference between the KO and not. I think two layers is guaranteed also Hydro Pump KO into blade. So, and we do reveal the uh, the soft boiled plus, um, we do reveal the soft boiled, or do you see the soft boiled uh, plus taunt combination. Now right there on turn 7, uh, after taunt ended, or turn 8, I think they should just click Leech Seed anyway. If they got taunted, so be it. You take an opportunity to switch out uh, into maybe Rotom and Volt switch around. Or, and then try and get in like Kiram and click Specs move, but you know, you don't want to get knocked off. But like, just because taunt wore off and they were at under half, that was a fine turn for the opponent to throw off Leech Seed. And they just opted a heavy slam there. I get it, like if they went for taunt, um, Horizon made the right play, which was always soft him because there's no point in taunting trying to outplay a leech seed where if they heavy slam crit you, Mew will die. And again, Mew is a great close combat switch in for the team. So uh, they actually opt to not bother taunting. So this is the more so uh, Horizon acknowledges the fact that he's on the higher ladder. Now he's taking advantage of the fact that the opponent most likely knows they won't taunt. So we do see a taunt come out on Kiram. Now, this is a. I don't know how I feel about that taunt. I'll be honest. The reason being is if it's Dragon Dance, Scizor will check it infinitely, right? If it did if it did not take Spike's damage, then you knew that it was Heavy Duty Boots. So there's only two options this Kieran would be. It's Choice or it's like Metronome type thing. So I, th I feel like right here, Knockoff was a stronger play always. You're faster guaranteed. And if you get rid of Kieran's item, it's not a threat. That's it. So I think the Knockoff was better. Um... That turn particularly be just because you saw Kiram take spikes damage. So you either get rid of its choice scarf or choice specs. Um, and if it's life orb again, you get rid of it and you can always uh, eat the hit up anyway, no matter what. But this risks like potentially modest Draco Meteor KOing Mew at 92%. So I don't like that taunt play personally. Again, if it was Dragon Dance, it's not a problem because Scissor will always be able to beat it 1v1 with Bullet Punch and can even roost on. And like, what's its best physical moves? Shadow Claw, <laughs> Icicle Spear, Zen Headbutt. So, and if it's sub roost with Earth Power, um, you could taunt after and you knock off twice, you break the sub and you get rid of the item. So I don't think taunt was the play right there. I think knockoff just got you more out of the turn. Not that it was a bad play, but had this Draco KO'd, it would have been terrible. Uh, obviously you do get a free softball here as uh, I want Oreos expects it but i mean that's a that's a, this is usually a free turn to, to, to fish for a crit right the turn they're forced to recover you can usually fish for a crit here that's why a lot of people do like for example if i if my opponent has clefable out right and i just hit it with uh, a pyro ball from cinderace and i don't have gumshot on cinderace and my pyro ball did uh 45 right because clefable is more than likely going to go for uh, a soft blow the next turn why not go for that four percent chance to crit them with pyro ball and then um you know go from there right 
Does Powerball have a higher chance to crit? Or is it just me? I feel like it crit all the time. But anyway, I guess usually what they do. So that was a fine turn on the opponent's part. Uh, because this mon is a problem. And again, that's why, because Mew is such a problem, I don't think that Horizon should have went for the taunt. I think they should have went for knockoff. Uh, but Mew comes back in. And again, this is just a giant threat. All this Mew has done so far is annoy the hell out of their team and get up hazards. So we do see a taunt come out, and that's great, man. This, this is why people run Jolly Mew. This is legit why people run Jolly Mew. And you have no reason not to click knockoff here as well, because getting rid of uh, Mew's leftovers, that longevity, basically that Mew's already in range of the Hydro Pump. So we do see Terracle come out. Uh, we don't see a taunt here. We don't see a taunt come out because um, they're at 64 and, and I mean I, they could still recover so it's not too bad if they uh, went for taunt there but I think they just want to get in tentacle just to try and burn this again. I don't know if that's impatience or uh, they're trying to conserve soft bullets since they're only at 11 and this could be something that can stall out uh, Terrakion's close combats if need be but in order to stall out Terrakion's close combat especially because you're using knockoff and spikes and taunt you need about 9 or 10 uh, soft bullets because that also comes into a uh, like that takes into account having the soft bowl versus cure on one or anything like that too. So it makes sense not wanting to waste it. So Tentacle comes out here. I had to go for Leech Seed. It would have been in their favor anyway. And they double out into Scizor, which is a really cool play. Um, so this wasn't a bad play all around because the worst thing that Celestial, Celestial already re revealed Leech Seed, Heavy Slam, Air Slash. So unless they're Flamethrower and not Protect, as their last move. Scissor's fine because Scissor has U-turn and it also deals with Mew as well. It gives Mew an ultimatum. It's like, okay Mew, uh, you can either defog or knock me off or burn me with will o So this is a pretty cool play because while it does weaken the, if it does, if they do get burnt, right? I mean, I, I guess if Mew had flamethrower, it'd be like, okay, Scissor died. But obviously Horizon expected them to go Terracore, which I think is a good mid-ground play. Like you don't want to go cure him that turn. Um, uh, Kirim wasn't bad that turn, but if Kirim takes Scald and Spikes, that's it. It just dies to Surf, and then Surf is going to kill everything from... Or Specs, uh, Scald is going to 2 hit KO slash kill everything. So you can't go Kirim that turn, which made sense why they would go Mew. So that was a good double, um, and it gives I want Aureos like, a decision to make. Like, Are they going to burn the Scizor if they have Will-O-Wisp, or are they going to defog? And this is really cool because it stopped the Mew from defogging, and it let them get in Rhyperior. Now, Rhyperior was obviously... Um, it's very similar, right? If you, uh, this looks like Horizon's way of getting up rocks, but it's also an SD because it'll be able to deal with Mew if Mew comes in. Uh, Celestina does go for Leech Seed here, which is fine, considering Heavy Slam isn't going to be doing too much. And this is uh, Horizon's opportunity to weaken Celestina. We do see an Air Slash come out uh, to, to literally flinch them, which actually works. Uh, but in this scenario, like you don't need to get up rocks. I think you just, especially if you committed to this, you really just want to hit Celestina. Now, the opponent does misplay here, in my opinion. Uh, the opponent ends up going for a uh, heavy slam there, which again, they clearly thought they could take out Rhyperior, right but it did 29% here, and we saw it do 26% here. If they had Protect, uh, this is assuming they have Protect, we don't know, but it's a Celesteela. Usually Leech Seed and Protect go hand in hand. Um, if they had Protect, they had to go for it there, because if they did, they got Celesteela healthier, and they actually would have been able to knock out Rhyperior right in the following turn without even giving it rocks, but instead, they failed to pick up the KO, and Rhyperior right did his job, like this was, this was fine. Um, I think that because the scissor is not burned, still healthy, because two layers of spike are up, which means that medical bullet punch knocks out Terrakion, and it deals with Kyurem, and Keldeo is looking more and more like a threat, they made this play. So I think that was fine. Uh, so right here, you always go Keldeo. Basically always. And I think you always click, um, it's either, see, like, I say always, but I think you click your water move here. Because, uh, you keep the blade out, you keep Mew out. You keep Rotom out, you keep Terrakion out, you force Kyurem in, and you always have a Scizor as a switch in. Like, even Specs Focus Blast isn't knocking out Scizor in one switch, so. You definitely go Caldeira, this is your biggest offensive threat. And you, <laughs> they go for Hydro Pump, which leads me to believe that they're, they, maybe they're only high, uh, if they're Specs, they might just be Hydro Pump, Icy Wind, and Secret Sword, and then Flip Turn. I feel like Specs Caldeira shouldn't run Flip Turn, though, and you should run that on Scarf only. But they go for Hydro Pump here, because they're trying to get some kills. It would have 2 killed that, it also knocks out. Uh, Mew as well, but they go for Hydro, luckily land from that position as they force in Kyurem, which is exactly what you want to do that turn. You want to force in Kyurem and you want to get in Scizor. So this is a good play and you do see the freeze dry. So Scizor is able to take that and now this is a free U-turn. So uh, it's just a, it's a good positioning on their part because now they can bring right back out Keldeo. However, the opponent opts to go into Mew. Now this is just to stop them from defogging, but I feel like if you had Surf or Scald, you always 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 go Keldeo there now the only way this is a bad play is like i said if their only other water move on Keldeo was flip turn if it's flip turn whatever you know what if it's flip turn whatever 
that's fine to go out into mute. You taunt, you stop the defog, which again uh, makes it so Hydro Pump knocks out the blade because of two layers. Uh, Bullet Punch knocks out Terrakion. Surf knocks out this. But again, I'm assuming the only reason they went out to this Pokemon was because they had um, was because they only had uh, what's it called? Hydro Pump as their option. So that's the only reason. Horizon, feel free to uh, let me know because again, in the Poke Pace you gave me, it was not the correct Caldeo set. Uh, just based on damage and this does not work out for Mew because it ends up getting paralyzed by discharge that was a good play on uh oreo's part going for discharge they actually leftovers wrote him too which is very funny to see but i guess because they have they rely on Mew to default it's fine either way now right here they end up going for the volts which which is fair because it lets you bring him the blade and the blade is basically the play you need to make because if you go Mew, um I mean, no matter what else comes out, you're going to always go Caldeo. But this at least forces Caldeo to go for a water move versus something else. So as you can see right here, uh, Tentacruel actually comes out first as opposed to going Caldeo. And I feel like that was a little bit of a misplay there, specifically because that's your free turn to click Hydro Pump. Why? There is no guard on that the blade. So you don't got to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about missing. And at least in front of the, the Pokemon in front of you. If they switch out to another Pokemon, sure, it would suck to miss. But Tentacruel would be a cool sack to have later versus like Terrakion or something. So I think that turn 20, uh, 29, they should have went out into Caldeo. It still risks Hydro Pump. Um, but if you hit the Hydro Pump there, you basically just click Specs, you get Sword, and you get kills. So uh, they do end up going for Scald as Mew comes out. Uh, and from this position, I guess Scizor is fine. Or they go for Sludge Bomb and it fails to pick. Oh my god, dude. It didn't do 18%. It didn't do 20% to a Mew. So again, from this position, all they did was let uh, Mew recover and basically be able to defog. Uh, luckily, they did get the Spikes turn on the Blade. So that's going to help for the Hydro Pump later. But yeah, now basically what happens here is that they are um, in a position where Scizor got burnt. Where, where it didn't need to. It did not need to get burnt. And they're forced to go Caldeo anyway. Now, Spec Secret Sword will knock out a Mew at 18%, so it doesn't really matter right here. And Secret Sword kills all these mons as well. Um, but it does force in the Blade as well, and it gets the Blade to get a kill. So they are going to go to Blade as Tentacruel comes out. Uh, surprise, they simply went for Gyro Ball there. I think that if they had Swords Dance, they should have went for it. Uh, especially because Scizor's burnt. Bulu isn't doing anything, and who cares if they go Bulu? All it does is heal you. So that was a weird play on the opponent's part. Unless there are no swords against the blade. Like, what? It's literally two swords. Why are you not dancing with them? So they should have for sure, for sure, click SD here if they had it. It does, it does risk, it, it does risk Tentacruel burning you, but you don't live a hit from Caldeo anyway. And if you get Chip on Caldeo, if this is actually Scarf Terrakion and not Bandit Terrakion, you can knock it out with uh, you can knock it out with close combat after a little bit of Chip. So, and Scizor wasn't a threat, so I feel like they should have easily SD'd there. Gyroball did not get them anything out of the turn. So we do see Scizor come out right now as Kiram comes out. That was a a little bit wild of a play too, because again, like it makes sense to go Kiram on that turn in particular because they're going to eat the hit and you get a kill with freeze dry and horizon saw that and ended up going out into uh, scissor here but i feel like again that was just one of those plays where that situation should have happened and they could have sd with the blade if, let's say imagine they sd with the blade as scissor came in if they sd'd a, a second time they got even more damage off on them and again that 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 close combat from Kiram could be a uh, excuse me from terrakion could be a problem so this worked out for them but i think that both of them didn't take advantage of the situation very well. And that's my, you know, my humble opinion. Uh, but obviously in this situation, Horizon knows it's set. It's U-turn bullet punch. He knows it can U-turn. So goes for the U-turn there. Beautiful U-turn play. Right out to Caldeo, uh, which acknowledging the fact that he can't miss versus this exactly and clicks Hydro Pump. So this play could have happened when spikes were on the field. And it would have helped so much. But now when Kiram comes out and scissors at 56, you're forced to sack Tentacruel. That's basically it. Or, I mean, I guess you can go hard into that too. But, yeah, that's just a play that could happen without losing bonds, in my opinion, from both sides. But, uh, yeah, so Scissor actually does come out on the freeze dry. Uh, and the opponent can't stay in with Kiram. Uh, the reason being is if they take bullet punch damage, they will lose to Surf, which will kill everything. Also, Secret Sword kills everything too. So, basically, it's smart to kill out, switch out Caldeo regardless. Like, you go Scissor, it's a win-win. Um, if they bring out Terrakion, which they actually do on the bullet punch, um, it takes damage for no reason. <laughs> like, that doesn't do anything for anyone. They just went that just in case they U-turn, but Horizon, uh, Horizon has no reason not to click 
bullet punch there. And again, right here, and this is again assuming this is Specs Caldeo, which I'm fairly confident is Specs Caldeo, not actually Scarf. If it was Scarf, then forgive me on what I was saying, but I'm fairly confident this thing. I'm trying to just look at the damage again. Because why, why Hydro Pump? Maybe it, maybe it was Scarf Caldeo this entire time. Maybe it actually was Scarf Caldeo. But th this, is the, this is the reason why I don't believe it's Scarf Caldeo. So look at the damage cap, right? This is this is uh this is choice scarf Caldeo's hydro pump, and this is the blade which runs always max HP. Max is 65 to 76. So unless it's modest, which whatever, it's 65 to 76. So it has to be specs, unless like I said, it is modest. And even then, like the roll, like it would have to have gotten it. So I don't know. I personally feel like it was going Caldeo at this point was fine. Uh, no reason to go tenor cruel and risk it being uh faster and get the kill um because then it comes down to a speed tie uh between basically it would come down to a speed tie but they have one extra pokemon because uh choice band terrakion's close combat does 98 percent minimum to caldeo so it will come down to speed tie from that position but yeah like you would have had a few other pokemon had they went caldeo initially they would have had a few other pokemon so it does reveal that the rotom is faster than the tenor cruel um as i think they were just scouting for that Bulu comes out on Terrakion, and Terrakion is going to click Poison Jab and knock him out. And now it just comes down to Keldeo. But I, again, I feel like this is a Pokemon that could have just came out in any situation and click Secret Sword. Uh, it it would have always came down to the Terrakion Speed Tie at this point, but it didn't have to if you still had Tenor, Cruel, Scizor, and Bulu. So had they gone Keldeo early, this game didn't have to be as close as it was. Because again, if they won the Speed Tie right here, uh, close combat had a, a really good chance to knock out Caldeo, and then they would have been in a good spot. So, yeah, that's just my um, that's just my thoughts on that. The way I would think it was a good game, I'll link uh, Horizon's Twitter down below. So this next one we have is between Raj Shoot versus Finchinator. Shout out to Finch, great guy as well. Check out his channel too. This is the PU World Cup. This is their game for PU World Cup. So. Raj has some really cool Pokemon. This is, uh, when is this? This is November 27th. I was about to say, yeah, this actually looks like PU. It doesn't look like the tier has, like, the PU I know right now with, like, x and things like that. But, uh, a few things. Finchinator has a Rapidash, which is very important. Rapidash deals with Kling Clang, Tokenomaru. Offensively, it's amazing in this game. Despite them having two resists and the Ruin, which can eat hits, uh, it's still really, really, really good offensively. Flare Blitz is beautiful in this game. And uh, the combination of Rapidash checking things like Kling Clang and Togedomaru and Seneconda with the offensive power of Unpheasant is really nice. I think Sinchino is a giant threat too. Uh, however, Finch does have a Caracosta to resist tw uh, Tail Slap and take every other attack besides Bullet Seed from Sinchino. And he has some good resistances as well. Gorgeist is a liability to finish because it's always a sap or drampa switching because Gorgeist basically runs poltergeist shadow sneak and, and uh power whip i think sometimes you might see rock slide but like it's good versus everything else but drampa with sap super completely walls it and like synthesis is usually its last move so the good thing is that finch does have a really really good drampa switching and that is mr mime mr mime is fairy and uh and soundproof so hyper voice doesn't work on it and obviously dragon moves don't work on it because of that fairy typing but uh, if Drampa clicks like Flamethrower or Fire Blast once, Mr. Mime is cooked. And that just means it can click Hyper Voice and Draco in this entire game. So Raj definitely wants to get in his Drampa as many times as possible, which he does get free switches with uh, the Gorgeist. And the great thing about Gorgeist is it's one of those mods that you don't got to predict versus. You just click Flamethrower. If they ever go into Rapidash, uh, you do have Altaria to check it. Same thing with Rune. And Altaria can check it a decent amount of times. So I think that like that's a play that you never really have to predict. But uh, yeah. Um, Kling Clang in the end game, eh. I'm not liking it too much, but the big thing about it is it resists to Unpheasant, and I like Togedomaru as well in that same regard. Sinchino is the fastest Pokemon there besides potentially Scarfs on one or two. Mr. Mime, I believe, is usually Scarf plus Healing Wish, but it could be Nasty Plot in this game. Nasty Plot's actually a lot more, uh, a lot better in this game than uh, Scarf because Nasty Plot plus Focus Blast, Dazzling Gleam, and Psychic kills everything. Uh, and then uh, Raj just has a few Pokemon that can come in. So we'll see how this goes, but is really nice because it doesn't die to anything on a lead besides Rhyme. Uh, rhyme excuse me mr mime and um oh mrs mime excuse me uh, mrs mime and uh yeah it should be okay here so drampa's really really strong as a start so we do see drampa versus sanaconda and this is where you either click draco meteor or hyper voice you don't have to predict turn one you can get the kill on sanaconda um 
I think this Dread Ball also had Energy Ball, so that was also a decent play, turn one, two. But we do see, I believe, a Hyper Voice come out as Mr. Mime reveals, yes, I am soundproof, and obviously I'm immune to it. So we see the Rune come out. The Rune is a good mid-ground because it'll take any hit from Scarf, Mr. Mime, and it also doesn't risk one of your Steel types on a potential Focus Blast. And it gives you an opportunity to get up Rocks, which is nice for wearing down Scarf, Mr. Mime, too, as well as Gore Guys. So we see a Psychic come out immediately on the rune did a good chunk and we are going to see stealth rock go out again uh rocks there were fine because you have two steel types that can come in finch is going to take this as an opportunity and the Senecon, this is just some more formalities right yeah okay so i can't knock you out with the next turn and you get advantage if you switch out to your steel type so i'm gonna go out to my mod that covers this pokemon staying in because it doesn't care about willow is from the rune right it has uh, shed skin as ability and i can get up my rocks as well which can pressure uh the drampa coming in but uh speaking of drampa i love this play because this is like I love plays that get you a lot uh, positional wise, right? So getting in Drampa is really nice because it's clear it's going to go for rocks. You wouldn't go for Earthquake or the Rune. Worst case scenario, they go for Glare there. Right? Finch would go for Glare there. That's legitimately worst case scenario. You don't want to go out to Altaria because it could have Stone Edge. So getting in Drampa right here as Santa Con is more than likely going to go for rocks this early in the game means that, again, you're in position to click a button. So we are going to see Stealth Rock go up. And again, we see Mr. Mime come out and Raj once again clicking Hyper Voice. This is safe. You have switch-ins, and you're just forcing Mr. Mime to take Stealth Rock damage. So the next time it comes, and I think Specs Flamethrower actually kills Mime, or it's very close. So this is a fine play. This is not a bad play. Um, you don't have to predict. You get Drampa in multiple times. So I, I like the way that Raj is playing. Uh, even though it looks like, oh, well, this dude just got two canceled turns. Patience, young one. <laughs> like, you, don't, you don't need to have... <laughs> this ain't... Sometimes you just gotta enjoy the ride. You don't always gotta be quick, all right? Have some fun. Let them have fun, too. Both sides. Anyway... That's also some life lessons to remember, all right? Anyway, so we're going to see a double out into Gorgeist. And this is a cool double because it deals with um, everything that could come in. Oh, God, except for me restarting the game. But Gorgeist was a good double because it dealt with um, the rune coming back in. And it dealt with uh, one of the steels coming in as well. Sorry, we're going to go right back out to that turn. So this is a nice double. However, when you make this double... In my opinion, you have to double again because it always lets in. Like that was that should have been um, another switch on Finch's part because now you're letting in Drampa and you're you're kind of it's getting a little bit scary because you got South Rock up. So right here we are going to see another power whip come out, and this is a really cool play because uh, obviously it just looks like they went from Fire Week to Fire Week. Um, Finchinator decides to go out into Rapidash. This is Finchinator's reasoning. You uh, you. You see me, you've gone for Hyper Voice twice, it's failed. You're not going to go for it again, all right? You're going to go for Flamethrower here because Draco or Flamethrower are the only plays that can hit Gorgeist. Sure, but the thing is, because Drampa is in a position where uh, it doesn't lose anything if Gorgeist stays in, it can even just stall PP if it wants to. This is a really, basically they went for Hyper Voice again. And again, a good play. Now, Raj was telling me how, uh, you know, they expected them to go Rapid Ash there, which is fine. You can obviously always expect it, right? It worked out for you. But I think always clicking Hyper Voice in that position was fine. You don't have to predict Mr. Mime. You're not, it's not like you're weak to Mr. Mime. And if you hit the giant threat that is Rapid Ash, you're in such a great spot. So that was a really good call on Raj's part. And that was a really, really good play. Taking advantage of the fact that you don't have to predict because you got two steals and a rune. And, um... Yeah, your steals that set up. And not only that, but getting rid of Rapidash is so great. Like, offensively, Rapidash was so annoying if the steel types were in, especially because the rune was going to be at under 70% when it came in, which means that Rapidash could 2-8 KO with Flare Blitz. So this was just a good play all around on Raj's part. And I think that Finch always should have went Mr. Mime anyway. But I also think that when Finch brought in Gorgeist, a double should have happened immediately. So, yeah, that was I think that was a little bit of a misplay on Finch's part too. And it, it obviously worked out in Raj's favor. And Raj just kept playing Hyper Voice because you don't got this is like one of those plays where like I'm stubborn, I'm gonna keep doing it, but it, it gets you so much just because stealth rock are up. So yeah, great turn. Caracosta comes out and has heavy duty boots. This is also a really nice turn for Raj too, because um it having boots could mean that it is sturdy, but uh sturdy plus shell smash. So hitting it makes a lot of sense because it's actually a legitimate threat. It is a legitimate threat, and you need damage on it in order to outspeed it with, uh, in order to knock it out with uh, Sinchino, if you're not Bullet Seed, that is. So, um, yeah, that's just basically it, right? Like, Sinchino's faster than it. I, I think because it's uh, 
not life orb, and it is heavy duty boots because it didn't take any stealth rock damage. I can't knock it out with plus two aqua jet after anyway. So this is a you have to make this play right. This hyper voice makes a lot of sense. You got to click hyper voice because if Caracosta Shell Smashers here, uh, liquidation and things like that, like you have potentially choice scarf token tomorrow, but you want you need damage on it in order to KO it. So this was a great play. You had to go for hyper voice. Good call on Raj's part. We do see the opponent going for the knockoff there, as we are going to see uh, Drampa click energy ball this time, which is nice. Uh, I feel like flamethrowers and energy balls could have came out earlier, but as I mentioned, because Stealth Rock were already pressuring Mr. Mime. It, that's not like something I'm like penalizing like oh yo minus like five points because you could have done this no you did the right thing Stealth Rock were up you didn't have to predict but yeah so Mr. Mime takes a lot of damage and we can always see the uh, we actually see the Toga tomorrow come out and this is like similar to what Finch did how they went Mr. Mime twice and then they went Rapidash um, however from this position Drampa is that much of a threat and it's getting KO so uh, you almost tunnel vision in this sense and you don't go for Focus Blast trying to predict even though you're in the back so you kind of have to predict uh, however, there's still a chance with a pheasant critting everything and Senaconda being healthy to deal with these steals. Uh, but flying resist is very low and Altaria is looking also very annoying too. So we do see Togo tomorrow come out. We are going to see a Psychic come out on the Togo tomorrow. It takes 17. Is that a salt vest? It has to be a salt vest, right? It took 17. Holy crap. So we do see the U turn. <laughs> this thing, this stupid face. We see a U turn come out as Altaria comes out. Now Altaria does have heavy duty boots. So we know it's not choice specs. We are going to see a hurricane come out. It is going to miss. And we are going to see Stone Edge connect. It's absolutely nothing, man. 46%, that's nothing. Uh, Caracosta ends up coming out on the next hurricane. And Caracosta gets crit, which is important because it means that Altari doesn't have to go for Draco. can go for Flamethrower there. This does allow Unfezza to come in. And because the rune can come out after, basically, as a mid-ground, seeing as how Mr. Mime isn't that much of a threat, considering it's... If it clicks Focus Blast, then you still have Altaria always to eat a hit, and then it'll kill it with Flamethrower. And obviously, Psychic and Dazzling Gleam are never sweeping you because I think this is all best token tomorrow. It takes 17, so it has to be AV. Uh, so you go out to the rune here on the Brave Bird, which also gets rid of the Super Luck ability, which means the crit chance is probably the normal chance, uh, is a normal chance. And this also gives you an opportunity to potentially click Will O Wisp on, or even Body Press on the opponent. Yeah, so Body Press is good too. So we see a Body Press come out as Santa Connor comes back out. And we are going to see the rune uh, end up going for Will O Wisp. And this is a good position because. Um, you don't want to go out into Altaria right on a, a Stone Edge, even though it doesn't do that much. And I doubt this thing is Coil. Maybe it's Rest or Glare as its last move. Actually, I feel like it's not Glare. I feel like Finch would have clicked Glare a, a million times. So we see Willowis come out. Now, even with Shedskin, this does give the Rune an opportunity later to come in as a sack to both Unfezit and uh, uh, Mr. Mimes. This is a good turn. And we do see the Rest come out from Santa Conda. So uh, Hurricanes, if they connect, they basically get kills. Uh, only Unfezit wouldn't die. And Mr. Mai would die and Gorgas would die. So we are going to see the Hurricane connect. Gets the confusion on Santa Conda. And Santa Conda is not going to wake up with Shedskin at all. Uh, so it's going to get a normal wake up. And we are going to see three Hurricanes in a row connect. I think all in all, this was just the play you had to make at that position. You didn't lose anything. Like uh, They showed rest, so they don't have a boosting move. So at the end of the day, you could also roost all the Stone Edges, provided they don't crit. Um, and even from this position, you don't have to keep Altaria alive anymore if you don't want to. Uh, but you could also just sack the rune and then bring out um, Cinchino after knock it out. So sacking Altaria here is fine. But I think, yeah, again, going on to the rune and sacking it to the Brave Bird uh, to get rid of their Wandering Spirit ability. And then going Kling Clang. And this is such a good position with Kling Clang too because if Pheasant stays in, you set up and win. Uh, if they go out to Gorgas, you, it's, you get to bring out Drampa, and even that 30-something percent HP, Drampa is walling it, and Flamethrower picks up a kill, or gets damage on him Pheasant to the point where Sinchino can win. So, uh, this is just good positioning all around. We do see the U-turn come out, as Gorgas is going to come out, um, as we are going to see a shift gear come out there. And that was, again, this was just an opportunity that they were going for, that if, if Pheasant opt to go for a Brave Bird there, uh, you get a shift gear up and you basically win. However... Because what I mentioned before, Drampa is still here. Why not just save Clang Clan because it can resist these two attacks, switch out into Drampa, or even go for sub depending on what they want to do. Seeing as how they haven't taken any life orb damage, you want to see if there were life orb or choice. Maybe they tried to trick or maybe they doubled there trying to predict the Drampa. So sub was a good play too. You do take some damage, but you're still far from out of range of these guys. And you have your Drampa you can safely go out into. So again, really, really, really good positioning. And now you just click Flamethrower, and Flamethrower gets a kill on Mr. Mime. Uh, Flamethrower does enough damage to him Pheasant, so that way you can deal with it. Again, keeping Drampa alive is always such a great play. Uh, and I believe this Cinchino is actually Choice Scarf too. So from this position, Knockoff looks like it is ready to sweep. But 
Go out to Tugger tomorrow is fine too. Keeping Drampa alive so that way it always deals with Gorgice. You never lose to it. You're you're positioning yourself to not lose. So really, really nice. Very, very nice play there. As we are going to see the Togunamaru go, uh, excuse me, the Pheasant go for the Roost. However, um, Togunamaru just keeps a little offensive momentum, goes for U-turn, brings out some Chino. I don't know if it was Choice Scarf or Choice Ban. I don't know at this part. But uh, basically, we do see... Oh, it, it is Choice Ban. Okay, so we do see some Chino survive the Psychic. And even if it hadn't survived the Psychic, it didn't matter because Togunamaru would just come out and click U-turn. Uh, which would KO Mr. Mime, and then you'd be able to get out Drampa if they switch out to Gorgice, and you click Flamethrower, which KOs. And there was no move they can lock themselves into besides Focus Blast that could try and sweep. And because Altaria has been preserved at 54%, and it has heavy duty boots, so it doesn't have to worry about Stealth Rock, they won. So that was really, 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 really good positioning uh, from Raj. Knew exactly what they had to do. Knew that Rapid Dash was a threat, so kept Hyper Voicing because if they caught it, they were in a good spot. So again, very, very, very good positioning on Raj's part. I really like that. I really like the way that I played that. I think it was it was phenomenal, in my opinion. I'll link their channel down below as well. So now, no. Well, I mean, whatever. I didn't mean to show. Is this one show too? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> well, we see how this game ends, so it doesn't really matter. I already know how the game is. But the point of this isn't just to see how they end as well. Uh, it's just to you know learn how we got there as well, what we could have done better. But OG Albina is right here and uh, cool draft league player as well. We have a national decks DLC draft league, so I'm assuming what national decks DLC draft league means is the opponent can have hidden power and pursuit and things like that. And obviously all the Pokemon we do see Mega Camera. I love that Mega Camera is paired with Bulu. This is a this is something that people just use. That's just a good combination. Chimpak use it as well in draft. And it's just in general, even when we played or use Mega Camera up in OU, we typically paired it with uh, a top of Bulu. So, I like this combination, and it looks like they have Trick Room support from Kefaragus, um as well. Uh, Ments is a giant problem because if it's special or even physical, uh, though special is way better because of Double Intimidate, uh, Hurricane has absolutely no switch-ins. Uh, Mega Absol is a giant threat. It has the move pull to definitely deal with everything on OG's team, um, and... I think the double sucks here. I'm gonna be really honest. Like it's a good, it's a good stop to, you know, nasty plot, Kefarius, but it could be Iron Defense plus Body Press type of thing, which I think would beat it one v one anyway. Unless it has Payback. Uh, but yeah, even with Cotton Guard and Fluffy and stuff. But I mean, double is cool. Double sucks, but it's cool because it can stop like Bulu and it can stop Metagross and it can stop Kefarius and Shadow Ball, which otherwise the, the Ghost Resist is the. Um, yeah, absolutely. But I also has to fear body press and Culver Berry, stuff like that. Um, Keldeo is a giant threat if it clicks Scald. I think Scald is phenomenal here um, because burning Tentacruel, stopping its recovery, burning Bulu, stopping it from being an offensive presence, knocking out that, burning Salamence, like burning Metagross. Like, so Keldeo is definitely the key. In regards to them having both Bulu and Tentacruel, it's definitely the key here. Keldeo, um, especially like they, they really work, pair well with the Fairy type in Clefair, uh, Clefable because. It's way harder for the opponent to break, uh, for excuse me, for OG to break Clefable if you know Boo burnt, <laughs> Metagross burnt, Tentacruel burnt. So you just wear them down repeatedly. But yeah, no fly resist. So Salamence goes in here. Especially I believe it's Hurricane. So Hurricane Salamence, provided it lands, goes in here. And I love the camera up. Camera up under Trick Room. Ooh, these Earth Powers, and I know this is Eruption camera up too. Uh, the eruptions are going to go flying. So yeah. Let's see how it goes. Again, the opponent really needs to play Caldeo well and get Scalds off. So we do see a Metagross lead versus Landorus. Now, this Metagross could be Shooka Berry, but um, regardless, obviously Clear Body Metagross is great here too because it doesn't care about the Intuit Intimidates. Metagross is important for dealing with Clefable, so it doesn't really make sense to stay in here. Uh, so we are going to see the switch out into Arcanine as we see OG switch out into the Ments. And this is really good because we want to dealt with Earthquake, right? And two, it deals with Sal uh, Arcanine as well because this is a Hurricane Salamence. I believe it's Specs too, if I'm not mistaken. So this is your opportunity to click Specs Hurricane here. Um, and it does 70% to Arcanine. So this is amazing because we already saw that Arcanine had Intimidate, right? We saw Arcanine Intimidate, which means it's not Flash Fire. So again, Eruptions from Camera and Fire Moves are not going to be blocked. And they're going to kill. They're going to kill Pokemon. So we see Abso come out on Salamence. This is like screaming, hey, I have Ice Beam. What are you going to do about it? 
that's basically that's basically exactly what the opponent is saying right here. So, but this does give me the opportunity to mega evolve. So we are going to see OG switch out into the uh, the coffin on the ice beam, which does nothing. And obviously, we know, and, and I'm assuming the Absol is expecting them to have body press here uh, with the uh, the Cobra Berry. So Absol is actually going to end up switching out into Clefable, which is fair. Uh, deals with it can potentially get up rocks. However. Ooh, this is where it gets scary because Trick Room goes up and now you get a free switch into Metagross. You want to go Metagross over going something like Camera because you want to keep Camera healthy because of those eruptions. Metagross makes sense and even a fire move wouldn't be able to knock out Metagross at all. As we see a double out to Keldeo and this is still really good for Metagross because again, a Metagross under uh, Trick Room is extremely scary. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't go out into double just because it can actually deal with every set besides Body Press, Iron Defense and I guess a Psychic set, like a Mixed Life Orb Psychic set. Um, surprised they went out to Arcanine considering it couldn't intimidate them. I think Arcanine could have been a sack, but yeah, we are going to see Zen Headbutt come out. It's going to connect and it's going to knock out the uh, Arcanine as Double is going to come out and we'll see Camera come out right here and they double out into the uh, Landris. Uh, just again, seeing, uh, I think potentially scouting for the Coffin wanting to come in or even like Mets or Bulu because they can get off the Intimidate. I don't know if Zemus are allowed in this one because it's a national deck, so who knows. Um, but either way, like one of the options that double we're gonna go for was like a body press type of thing, cotton guard. I don't think they would have body pressed initially. They always would have cotton guarded that they stayed in. So camera was a good double. And now because this camera up is eruption, whoo! That's one kill for the camel baby. Now trick room is down, so Kelly is gonna be able to come out. Luckily though, they do have two decent answers. But like I said, if this Kalio is scald, burning tentacle can help you beat it uh 1v1. So we do see it's sub combine, which I think is very good too, because first off, all of Mensa's moves can miss. Right, all the messes moves that can break this can miss. Hurricane, Air Slash if it has it, Draco Meteor, and Flamethrower ain't breaking it. So, this is really good. All right, Caldeo to avoid it. This is like the position you want. So, I would have brought Sub Combine as well, but I definitely would have brought Scald, I believe. Uh, especially because Sub Combine lets you take the um, that attack after. They go for another Combine, which is a little bit greedy, considering Tentacruel almost always runs Haze. Uh, especially if they're fighting Keldeo in draft and they know they're going to fight Keldeo. They don't want to give a combine Keldeo an opportunity to set up on it. So I think they should have attacked there as a reveal secret sword. Um, and yeah, they just do some damage there. So uh, this is just a Pokemon that like it can break it. Now we do see uh, OG switch out into the uh, Mence here mainly because maybe scouting for the last move or knowing that Mence can break the sub and kill it. However, of course, it is making you risk Hurricane. So we're going to see Keldeo go for another sub. They nearly go for subs. So at least they could throw some Hurricanes and at least threaten the Keldeo. Uh, we see it go back right back out into the um, in the Tentacruel, though. Uh, not wanting to risk and also scouting for Icy Win as the last move. So this is fine. Again, um, again, they revealed Surf. And like I said, I think when you're fighting Bulu and Tentacruel, you definitely, even if even though maybe the Surf is uh, additional power, did something like 2 KO Metagross or something. I mean, Secret Sword would do it too. But like maybe it did something versus the, the rest of his draft um, that allowed you to actually break, right? In a sense. But I feel like you always want Scald here because again, that recovery would have been gone. So you would actually be able to beat it 1v1. You could wear down that. You could wear down Bulu. And that would help your, this would help your case with Clefable late game because getting rid of this means that Clefable does a lot better. But they still have Metagross, which I think might be choice ban at this point. But uh, yeah. So we're going to see Secret Sword come out, which is something they should have done at that po uh, another point before. But uh, we're going to most likely see Tentacruel break the sub and then uh, Keldeo go for another sub as Mets is going to come out. That's basically the play you want to make. The other option you can always go into is uh, Bulu too. And this is good because Bulu knows it's free. Um, we do see a Secret Sword come right out. I, I don't like the Secret Sword initially because it had they went Mets. Uh, if you went for sub, you have multiple opportunities to attack them safely instead of having to go for sub in front of them and potentially lose your HP for no reason. So I think that like sub again was the better play all around. Uh, and Secret Sword also like if they went the coffin didn't do much. So, but again because there's no scald, this Bulu is isn't scared at all. So they can go right for the Swords Dance. Swords Dance is cool because there's nothing they can do to beat it, and it also allows it to overwhelm Clefable. Uh, double comes up. We are going to see Double go for the Cutting Guard. And this Bulu revealing that has Taunt. I like Taunt too because Taunt also lets Bulu beat Unaware Clefable because you just Horn Leech it down and then you just Taunt it so he can't Soft Wield or Heal or whatever. Um, and it also stops Caldeo from combining up multiple times. And again, this Bulu is very important. So you see the Coffin come out right now. Obviously, uh, this is another opportunity to go for Trick Room. Uh, you're not worried about Clefable because you have Metagross at full HP. You're not worried about Caldeo because you have Bulu. 
Uh, and we do see Absol come out. So last time we didn't see a Will O Wisp or anything. Obviously, Will O Wisp wouldn't work because of Magic Bounce, but we didn't see anything come out from this Kefarius. However, we don't see an item. So again, this is basically screaming Cobra Berry here. Um, and yep, it's Cobra Berry, it's max defense, and Absol goes down to Body Press. Clefable comes out. Metagross is going to come clean now on the Fire Blast. A good play, as we do see a burn as well. We do see a burn come out from Clefable. So pretty important that burn right there. We see another Fire Blast come out and miss on Camerupt. Uh, I think the op uh, what they were trying to do here was just uh, not let it set up with Calm Mind, but also to avoid it. I believe this Camerupt also has the Flash Cannon, so it doesn't really matter if it's not at full HP. But it is pretty fortunate that they, they still are not. They, they didn't get hit because now their Eruption is full power. So we're going to see an Eruption come out as Caldeo is going to come out. Camerupt can beat uh, Clefable 1v1 anyway. Uh, in this scenario, especially with Hayes Tentacles, so um, Bulu comes right out on the on the clef uh, on the Caldeo on the double, and we're gonna see a nice little Moon Blast come out on the Metagross. This also could have been Assault Vest, considering uh, they didn't do too much. It wasn't Assault Vest because it just clicked Stealth Rock. What was this? Uh, it had to be. It's Cobra then, right? It had to be Cobra. But damn. So the reason Rocks went up there is so that Eruption, if they click it again, uh, they'd be able to um, knock out Caldeo. It wouldn't be a roll. Uh, and, and Clefable isn't a threat because you just go out into Tentacruel, which is faster, and always click Haze so you don't let them set up. Uh, and then Taunt Bulu will do the trick after that. But we see a Meteor, uh, a meteor Mash miss. Uh, it just makes it, again, like the roll is a little bit more annoying. But uh, we're going to see Bulu come out right now because it's absolutely free. Like I said, there's no Scald from this Caldeo. This is why you want Scald, guys. If you're using Caldeo in Draft and your opponent has Bulu and Tentacruel, run Scald, please. Because it shouldn't be given that many opportunities. So we see a Leech Seed come out, uh, which is fair because Leech Seed would deal with double, which we saw as initial switching. And then uh, this was a good double as well because it gets in on the uh, the Metagross and doesn't allow anything. But it just allows Bulu right back in or Salamence as well. Uh, surprised it went Salamence. I think Salamence was a little bit like unnecessary. I feel like you'd lose nothing by going out to Bulu. Uh, you have Taunt and Leech Seed, so you'll beat double 1v1, even if it's Cotton Guard Body Press. Uh, the clef, you just click, I mean, you're gonna click Corn Leech that turn anyway, so I feel like Mence didn't really give you much. Like, if anything, it's giving the opponent opportunities to sweep. Not very many, though, because again, they don't have a way of burning you, but, and I really want to make sure you guys, I want to drill that in your heads, right? Like, that's, I know I'm repeating it a lot, but it's, it's the truth. So, uh, we're gonna see uh, Caldeo try and sub and avoid Hurricanes, as it finally does. Uh, however, from that position, it doesn't really matter. Like, it keeps Salamence alive. If you're just gonna go out to Bulu anyway, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're gonna go out to Bulu anyway, I feel like those turns were just wasted turns. Uh, you didn't need to do them. They did nothing. They lowered the Caldeo's HP, which was cool. But, I mean, at even that point, Goats is basically giving up at that point. But, even at that point, you really didn't have to uh, do that at all. And Caldeo's almost back out to the same HP it was last time. So, we see Double come out. We are going to see a Horn Leech come out on double, and uh, at this point, I believe uh, the Coffin is going to come out, click Trick Room, and, and then I think the Camel is just going to sweep. So we see Clef come back out as the Coffin does come out, and this is cool because this is an opportunity to click Trick Room, uh, but they go Tentacruel just in case it is Calm Mind Cl uh, Clef, and they can just click the uh, Haze if that be the case. Sludge is going to come out and does a decent chunk to Clef, all things considered. Side Shock is going to come out, and there's no way this is... Its last move is Calm Mind. So the Camel can come out here. It doesn't really have to worry too much. And it actually reveals that the Camel is running Flash Cannon, uh, which is cool. It's weaker than Eruption, but still very strong versus Clefable, especially with Sheer Force. And this is the position you want. Basically, you want double in. You want to be able to go for the Trick Room. And we finally see, well, we don't see, it's not the last move, but we assume Shadow Ball on Coffin as well. But we see the move that allows Camera Up to come in and just clean up everything right here by clicking Eruption. That's it. So there's one Eruption. Uh, Clefable comes out. Eruption is going to nuke it. But I think they went for Flash Cannon here just to reveal that, like, if you hit me with, I think this was just like the saying that, oh, if you want to say that the Fire Blast Mist matter because you could have erupted me, no, Flash Cannon is going to kill you anyway. Otherwise, you would have just went for Eruption there. And Double is going to come out, and Camera is going to get the dub right here. So, like, again, I think OG played fine. I think that the Salamence plays were a little bit wasted, didn't really have to do them. Uh, played knew his Wing Con very well, and even when Goats burnt Metagross, it wasn't enough, right? It wasn't enough to be able to win. So, uh, again, Please run Scald on your Keldeos when that's happening, uh, especially when you're fighting Bulu and things like that. You want to be able to burn them. Had they been able to burn Bulu, had they been able to burn Tentacruel, that Keldeo could have potentially won, or at least weakened Bulu to the point that it wasn't a threat. That's my thought process on that. So we have another game. 
and this is a uh, please uh, this is um, please bully and uh, versus milk and this is they're repping the BL Knights team right they are repping the uh, the BL Knights right now so uh, we want to watch and see what's happening but this is actually a team that again I use with blunder on ladder with Sash Rose right Sash Landris SD um, SD Bisharp heavy duty boots Rotom Scarf Cartana and Bandit Urshifu and they are fighting the biggest threat to the team uh, which is the combination of Rillaboom plus Lucha. Lucha is very good versus the team. It basically just plays clo uh, close combat acrobatics and kills everything. And they even have Pokemon like Corviknight to deal with Bisharp. Uh, and they have Kyurem, which completely wreaks havoc and destroys us every single time we fought it. If y'all watch the BL Knights, you already know that is exactly what happens every single time. So, um,. Yeah, so they really have to be careful about that. They have to preserve the Sash. And the good thing is, it looks like the opponent doesn't have a Rocker, which means that your Sash is going to be intact on Landers and Rose Raid unless you choose to give it up at a point, right? So that's really good, the fact that they have that. Um, Cartana is really nice here, too, because Scarf Cartana deals a Curum, deals a Fini, deals a Lottie, unless it's Scarf or Mystical Fire, or I guess Ice Beam, but even Ice Beam, Scarf will knock it out. Ice, Mega Lottie, unless it's Ice Beam, knocks out Cartana, but not this one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bisharp again is strong for weakening Corviknight, and weakening Corviknight opens up Rosary because Rosary Sludge Bombs are really good here, and Sleep Powders and things like that. Um, but yeah, they're gonna have to really play well around Lucha. So the way we used to play around it was keeping Rotom at 100%, and then just keeping Rosary Sash intact to be able to deal with it. So that's like what we did on the BL Knights. So let's see what's gonna happen right here. So we see a Bisharp versus Tapu Fini lead now. Great lead because you can easily click SD, and SDing is a great play because you want to force Corviknight in, knock off its item, and then threaten it with uh, Kartana later, right? So getting rid of Corviknight's Rocky Helmet is great for Kartana, it's great for Shifu, and getting rid of Corviknight is great for Rose Raid. So already, uh, the opponent should 100% go right into Corviknight here, if it's Body Press, 100% go right into Corviknight here, and just click Body Press immediately. But... Uh, we're going to see Bishop click SD as Tapu Fini stays in and goes for Taunt. Now, this would not have been a bad play had Tapu Fini been faster. But I don't think this is ever worth it if you know your Tapu Fini isn't faster than both variants of Bishop, right? Let's say this Tapu Fini was 240 speed and Bishop at adamant max speed is 239. No reason to risk this at all. Uh, you can use Tapu Fini as uh, a check to Landorus, uh, a potential defogger too, although I think it's combined. As well as the Yoshifu Rapid Strike check. Though you have multiple of those on the team. So this is just a play where like the opponent gave too much to Bishop. And now Bishop's plus two. And it's coming. It's coming right now. So you can't really do anything about it. So uh, Bishop goes right for the Iron Head on top of Feeny as they get flinched. This did not matter at all. What is Feeny going to do back? Surf? Draining Kiss? It does not matter. You already gave Bishop the opportunity. So the opponent, again, 100% should have went Corviknight first turn. And click Body Press if they had it. Which they definitely should have Body Press on this team. But uh, yeah, either way, we're going to see Corviknight come out now as they make the good play and go right for knockoff. It's absolutely free. And it is Rocky Helmet Corviknight, so it's more than likely running the, uh, the body press because they live the bit sharp. It's max defense. It takes 75%. So we're going to see that Pokemon go down immediately. And that's Bishop's job. Bishop does his job. The only, argue, the only thing like right here that you got to argue about is like the fact that like was Bisharp the sack because Lottie has a threat? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Lucha is way too much of a threat. It's way too much of a threat. You can't let it set up for free. So, again, the opponent didn't have great positioning with that. They could have switched immediately and then threatened the hell out of it. And please took full advantage of it. Not only got damage on Feeny, which is great for everything. Literally, our Shifu kills it too. And Lantern's an earthquake. But got rid of the ground immunity that isn't, uh, you know, Lucha or... Or Latias, which you can explode on with Landers anyway, and forced in Halucha now early. So they take the close combat here. Um, now they make a little bit of a misplay here, in my opinion. They go out into Kartana. Now, if they're choice banned, this is a fine bluff because Lucha always runs adamant and Kartana is faster. But we know this is choice scarf uh, cart, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a roll to knock them out with Smart Strike if they're no investment, which you don't 100% know if they're no investment or not, even at minus one. So it was an interesting bluff. But I think Rotom was the better play because Rotom just clicked Volt Switch. You forced out, if Rotom came in, you forced out two Pokemon, either Latias or Kyurem. And Kartana has a better position versus them than it does versus a minus one Lucha. So let's say hypothetically the opponent stayed in here without Lucha and lived the Smart Strike, which it could, and KO'd Kartana. Well, you just screwed yourself over because Latias wins. <laughs> like, that's just basically how it is. Latias wins. Um, so... Luckily, the opponent does switch out, fearing the band, as we're going to see the Smart Strike come out, 
and do 52 percent uh, so again from that position like it was just one of those things where rotom would have been better especially because rotom is able to come out in the u-turn and ladias can come in and just set up or do anything so lenders comes out on ladias as we see ladias be subs now we're fearing sub come mine from ladias and it could be stored power um so a few things here lenders could either go right for the boom and break its sub or it can go for stealth rock first the reason stealth rock first are okay is because if this is max hp ladias uh it's not going to be able to KO Kartana, and if it's, unless it boosts multiple times, and if it's not max HP Latias, then uh, it has no HP, which means that Kartana can kill it after. So as long as Ladi doesn't KO right now, behind a sub, like, the only bad thing would have been if this Ladi was, like, random sub Ice Beam, which isn't a set, or random sub Surf, uh, and sub Surf, like, Psychic Roost would have actually won from this point, even with Kartana being alive because you just go for psychic get a little bit of chip and if it goes for knockoff who cares you go lucha and click sd you get a kill or you just bring it back like a car, cart can't win from that position so do you see stealth rock go up and stealth rock are okay because it means that lucha is in range of like sludge bomb from this and uh, it's good for chipping down kirim which is really good for your kartana smart strike to knock it out from 75 percent and it also gets rid of the roll on rillaboom so that's fine and we do see a roost come out from lottie so we can infer or we can try and refer that this Lottie's last move is sword power which means that at plus two plus two uh, we can run the calc right here just so we can do this is something we want to do as well like if you don't know uh anything let's not if you don't know anything but if you don't know exactly what you're fighting um let's assume it's uh whatever oh you showed out so if it's max if it's zero special attack right if it's max hp and it's plus one or excuse me it's plus one plus one whoops plus one plus one and we see store power this is how much uh carton is going to take 48 to 56 percent now let's assume it could be max special attack even if it's max special attack the most carton is going to take is 70 percent here so this is only if it's uh that if it's stored power is last move which you can kind of figure out that it is because you're not going to run a latias that can't touch fairy types uh it's way easier to run a latias that can't touch dark types because you have so much things to threaten them, like you have this mon, you have this mon, you have this mon, and this to, just to, if I have to tell you the certain dark types in the tier, right? Tyranitar, which all those mons beat, uh, especially if it's Focus Blast Kyurem, or if it's Manda Buzz, then uh, Lucha can set up on it, Fini beats it 1v1 as well, uh, whoops, sorry, uh, and Kyurem deals with it too. So like there's just situations where like it was okay to go Kartana here, like Kartana is the best play, it's Scarf as well, clicks knockoff, um, we do see a crit, now Again, this is knockoff if it's max HP, which is 81 to 96. And this is knockoff if it's uh, no HP. So either way, it was a roll to KO. Um, and that roll that is, if it's max HP, then it's no way to KO. And if it's no HP, it was a roll in Kartana's favor. But I don't think it would have mattered. I don't think the damage on Kartana matters because even if they hit it with the star power and it's max special attack, well, first off, it would have died, uh, depending on the roll. Um, if it hit it with max special attack, it still doesn't KO with Grassy Glide from Relivum after. So I don't think that could have mattered. It's like, it's just annoying in a sense. Uh, but yeah. However, from this position, I do think that what the opponent should have done was actually not uh, thrown away the... Um, actually not thrown away the Latias and potentially went out to top of Fini. The reason being is... Uh, they may be thinking that Lucha just wins immediately, which it kind of does with close combat stuff, especially because you got damage on Rotom. But if you went Tapu Fini there and sacked it, you could have went Lucha right after and clicked close combat and it was free. And keeping Latias alive for these guys. So again, another misplay on the opponent's part, in my opinion. We see a beast boost come out. We're going to see Rillaboom come out just to let in the... Uh, we see Rillaboom come out just to let in the Lucha. Again, I think that Lucha should have came out first. I think the close combat was absolutely fine, and Lucha is also guaranteed faster than these guys. Uh, it would have lived a knockoff. Uh, if, if it did click knockoff, it would have gotten its own burden boost anyway. And keeping Rillaboom alive for potentially your Shifu Rapid Strike or like Chip on Rose Raid is very important in my opinion. So I don't think you had to go there. Uh, I think you could have went Lucha, click close combat, and then always sack something like Feeny on like or Shifu or Rotom or anything, or even just made your big your end game going down to Kyurem. So, but again, if Latias was alive, it's fine. But we are going to see how Lucha come out. Uh, and the opponent is actually going to save Cartana. I mean, excuse me, please is going to save Cartana, which is smart. Uh, why not? It's faster than these guys, and your way of beating Halucha is going to be via Sludge Bomb from Rose Raid. So this is nice. So you smart strike these guys. So we're going to see a close combat from uh, Lucha come out. It's easily going to be able to knock him out. I mean, it makes sense to SD there. You got plus one defense. You have no item. Cart's not going to do anything. Rashifa is going to come out just to get a little bit of chip with the 
acrobatics. Now the reason this play was good is because and they even said this is why I wanted to use this game because they said the fake out GG here because this is obviously sad. We know this is Sash Rose Raid, right? We've seen this is how we beat Lucha as well when we played. So obviously it's about to live and knock it out with Sludge Bomb. The reason going Urshifu first though was better than uh going out into Rose Raid first and then potentially um and then potentially not knocking them out and then Rose Raid Sash broken and then Urshifu at the Aqua after because it doesn't let like a Karam which is like sub heavy duty boots so like Ice Beam freeze dry come in and uh potentially win from that position though I don't think it could have because I think Kira I think Urshifu was obviously faster but if it's like sub Dragon Dance as well it could be faster too but like, even that from that position doesn't make a difference because it's not a full HP so it just was a better all around play because it doesn't let any BS happen like a random freeze on or Shifu from Ice Beam and then another sub come out and then you just get to click Earth Power after and you kill him or whatever. So it was just the, the best turn, of uh, the best way to do it. We see Rose Raid survive because of its Focus Sash, as I mentioned. And we're going to see how Lucha go down to Sludge Bomb. And from this position, Kirim is going to come out. It cannot set up on Rose Raid for free if it's Dragon Dance. We also see it take Stealth Rock, so we're going to assume it's Specs. Ice Beam comes out. And because the Cartana is indeed Choice Scarf, comes out with those Stealth Rock that Lander is placed earlier, Smart Strike is going to knock him out and Smart Strike is going to be able to sweep. So I think that plays play fine uh honestly the only thing i didn't like was the fact that they didn't go rotom initially on halucha i think rotom was better uh just the volt switch instead of going cartana because let's say again if the halucha stayed in and clicked close combat yeah the biggest threat is gone but first off you already lost bisharp and then if this goes down you just straight up lose the lottie especially because it's sub combine recovers so you're not even doing enough even if you turn around it don't matter as long as it gets a combine it's it's sub is not being broken by rose right right i have to boost and stuff like that and obviously the Kiram is also a giant threat and it forces close combats and takes certain strikes and it's not really a deal so again the only play i didn't like from please was the fact that they did not uh, go out to rotom to just volt switch on lucha because if uh if lucha sobbed on volt switch or whatever uh you just you just go right back on the cartana now it's a guarantee kill so yeah but uh yeah um i like that game and again just to show that it really 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 doesn't matter what you submit i like them you know um i want to and i always like say the joke hey if you want to put pbr battles go ahead we'll watch them we got a pbr battle tonight <laughs> so this is gonna be fun so uh anyway this is from pokey world dp and you see the quality because this is from 2011 but we're gonna watch this anyway we're gonna analyze now this was actually a gym leader battle so, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Poke World DP is the bug gym leader. So they're allowed, they have to bring four bugs and then they get two wild cards. And they did not tell me that rule, but I'm going to assume that's the rule. I'm going to leave a like on this. I'm going to assume that's the rule just because, oh, we're going to put, we might put some volume on with this too. Let me see. Put some volume up with this one, right? I should. Y'all want to hear, y'all want to hear some Pokey, uh, from, from throwback from Pokemon Battle Revolution. Yeah. If you don't know about Pokemon Battle Revolution, yeah, you're missing out. You are straight up missing out. Um, like 15 minutes, hold up. But yeah, so the opponent, uh, probably like a younger person, but they use their in game team, right? From our Gold Soul Silver. They got Raikou, Suiku, Mewtwo, Entei, uh, Ho Oh, and Typhlosion. Obviously, they know what they're doing because they picked Typhlosion as their lead. We're going to watch this and. This is more like a more fun one. It's less to analyze, more so. I don't mind if you guys submit Wi-Fi battles and things like that. And like I said, guys, please follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv says Pokemon. First off, I'm almost to 100,000 followers, which is pretty cool. But uh, secondly, um, secondly, you know, I want to be able to, like I said, I get hundreds of submissions. And I clearly cannot put them all in the one video, right? We only did one, two, three, four submissions for far. This is the fifth. And we're already in an hour and three minutes, you know, for this video itself. So I can't make a huge video every single time. Um, and I am going to have friends coming soon, just not in this one because things got really busy this week. But uh, yeah, we're going to see Mono Bug. We do see that they decided to lead off with Scizor. Uh, Scizor, I guess, only if they let Mewtwo in the enough fire move, but Scizor's okay. Um, honestly, they have to bring four bugs and Swampert. It makes sense. And I'm assuming that... Wait, it's all six, right? Let me see this. Let me see this music real quick. Hold up. Let me listen to this. Is it all six or only five? Okay, so it makes sure. Okay, you can bring all six. Okay. Just making sure. Can you bring both your wild cards? Okay, good. I was about to say, you need both Swamper and Heatran here because the dude has like 10 million fire types on their team. So this is, like I said, Monobug. 
uh, versus Super Shadow 493. So we're more so going to watch this and just react to it in a sense than like, if this was a, a super serious battle, then I'd be like, okay, you do this, this, and this, this, and this. But yeah, we're going to see what happens here. Oh my God, that's the throwback, man. Da, 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 da. Come on, show me. Da, 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 da. The announcer, please tell me it's on. Because I watched it in quiet. Hello, where's the announcer? Bro, what's the point of playing Pokemon Battle Revolution if he's not talking? And now, okay, I'm about to say. <laughs> so the boy misses turn one on, uh, obviously on, on Scissor. We're going to give him everything because I got mad for a second there was no announcer. Look at look at this little animation. Ooh. I think that's Choice Band Scissor too, bro. It did like 70% to Raikou. Then again, we don't even know if it's EV trade. Look at the guy messing around with his remote as well. I also look like they, uh, they, it looks like they cut around, like, um, the, the animations in between, so, we'll see Close Combat come out, we're gonna assume this is Scarf Heracross, CC Zavis play at that point, we know they have Ho in the back, but, why would you click Stone Edge in, when this threat is in front of you, plus, if they're throwing out random thunders, that chance to paralyze you, is hella annoying, so I'm assuming Typhlosion or Ho-Oh should come out here, yep, so it comes out. Now we know that this is called Heart Gold. <laughs> Again, this is probably a kid they're playing, but this is 2011. This brings you back. We had to watch this. We had to. And hey, leave a like if you guys remember Pokemon Battle Revolution. And wouldn't mind like a, a remake of it or something. I personally think that an, a third installment of Pokemon XD Go Darkness and, you know, Coliseum would be a little bit better personally. But I'm just hyped to see it. Yep, Heatran's great. Unless they have Earthquake, they're good. They do go right for Sacred Fire as well. And the t train has Toxic or Ancient Power. It can at least deal with ho -Oh. So it looks like they can't touch it. So you're going to switch out. I mean, they have Suicune on their team. So that makes a ton of sense as well. And they decide to go out to Typhlosion on potentially Toxic. We are going to see... Oh my god. Did you bring Substance to Heatran on... If it's Leftovers Special Attack? Ah, it's Sub-Earth Power. Okay. Maybe it's Sub-Earth Power Toxic. A crit comes out and Typhlosion goes right down. <laughs> I think the reason I'm watching this as well is because there's a dust tox in it, and in the the replay they posted, uh, they we saw like dust tox like beating something. So Suicune should have came out initially on, um, like originally. Uh, we are going to see Fire Blast come out on Suicune. Surprise Fire Blast over Earth Power. Obviously Earth Power would have done more, but Jesus man, why did Fire Blast do so much? Oh, it's it's boosted by Flash Fire. Duh. Okay, never mind. That's fine. That's fine. It's boosted by Flash Fire. Uh, so it did a good chunk. Holy crap. Uh, but obviously from this position, they can switch out into, I guess, Dust Talks if they have Light Screen. Uh, Swampert could also be the play if you want to, but Swampert also deals with Entei, so I don't know if you want to keep that. There's Dust Talks. That little baby Shiny Dust Talks, man. Shinies look so cool in this too. My dude opting for the Surf and Hydro Pump combination. Obviously, the opponent is uh, a fan of Caldeo, which didn't exist. Oh, it did exist. 2011? Mm, I feel like it did exist in 2011. I could be wrong. Nice little Hydro Pump miss over here. And we are going to see the Dust Tox go for Light Screen, which means that Suicune is going to have no shot at beating this Dust Tox. <laughs> dust Tox one v one Again, I'm just kind of ignoring this. I'm just kind of, and, and not ignoring, but enjoying it, rather. It's always cool to see, like, I my, one of my favorite things, and at this point we're kind of just talking about memories, but one of my favorite things, and I'm really happy that you submitted this, just because it, it, it's the throwback. I used to watch this guy called Zero Yarko, and they used to use baby Pokemon. Beautiful Toxic, by the way. Toxic plus Roost plus Light Screen. I love it. Um, they used to use baby Pokemon and beat, like, people who were a little bit newer. I can say noobs if you wanted. But just anybody. Because going on Battle Revolution, you always fought people with, like, Dark Rise and Legendaries. And then they had their random Torterra thrown in with that. It was a beautiful place because there was no rules online and you could just battle. It was great. It was absolutely great. You, I, would, I would play, like, I would go online, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and just play like, you know, Japanese players from around the world. Um, and it was an awesome, just an awesome experience. And it's beautiful to see Dustoff just taking on some legendaries as well. So it's Bug Buzz, Light Screen, Toxic, and Roost, which is fair considering Dustox doesn't really have anything. And I think at this point, Quiver Dance isn't a thing. It's 2011, so I don't remember. Pretty sure Quiver Dance came in like way after Gen 5. So, yeah, anyway, the uh, Suicune is going to go down a nice little dust toss over here. Beautiful. But again, guys, like I said, 
if you want to submit Wi-Fi battles, if you want to submit things like that, just make sure you tell me. You know, you can submit. You can literally submit. I don't even care if you narrate over it. Like this guy's obviously. We're gonna play. We're, this guy's obviously not narrating over it. This is just an example. But I don't care if you narrate over it because even when like the WB and like draft leagues start and I'm watching them on my Twitch, I'll pause what they say and go through their thought process and say what's right and wrong. So Mute is gonna go for Fire Blast and absolutely miss, which is beautiful for Dustox because Dustox is going to get up the light screen once more. Nice little dodge and giving them a secondary chance as well. <laughs> Dustox taking out Mewtwo's man. What's the what's the <laughs> Just sit down. This Fire Blast is about to do what, 30%? Oh my god, yeah, 35%. Look at Dust Tox go. So obviously if they hit the last one, they, they may have been able to a kill, but it doesn't matter because Toxic is going to wear down this Mewtwo. And I think it's very funny that they haven't went whole. I guess the reasoning behind it, and I know a lot as like, as a kid, I used to think like this too. And I mean, I guess even now you take it as well, but like, oh, the dude had Heatran. I, can po I can't possibly use Ho because they're just going to go to Heatran every single time. But still, you lose nothing by uh, at least... You lose nothing by at least trying to go for it, you know? And even though, like I said, this guy is obviously uh, a Pokemon X. Ooh. This person, this is 2011. Yo, they were predicting Mega Mewtwo X. Yo, shout out to Super Shadow 493. Also, if you did not, if you did not have. Oh, this is great too because Dust Tox can get a Toxic off on Ho-Oh. Provided it misses or doesn't kill somehow with Sacred Fire. And that can help Heatran while at 1v1. But yeah, like, this guy was predicting Mega Mewtwo X back in the day. We're going to see Perk come out, which is fair if it has Surf. We're going to see a Thunder. Ooh, the opponent making that mid-ground, trying to catch that Heatran come in. But obviously right here, we see a nice little prediction. No, not the Fly. They didn't make Fly better. So they go for Avalanche here. Uh, surprised they didn't go for, like, uh, a, a Surf or anything, really. Are they playing a waiting game? Yo, that's how every stall player feels. Are they playing a waiting game? <laughs> when they're just switching around getting regenerated. <laughs> so we already see Avalanche come out. Again, surprise they went for Avalanche. Oh my god, that did, that did a lot. But then again, it's a, it's a crit from back in the day, which means it does double the damage, not 1.5 times. Ooh, okay, at least Ho's showing why it's going to be annoying as hell here. Okay, so that's why it's Avalanche. Uh, it's curse. It's more than likely curse avalanche earthquake, so maybe it can't actually touch the hole. So we at least get to see. I think how he's circling around with the Wii remote. That's exactly what I do all the time. But if sacred fire does come out from hole, which is something they could do instead of fly, like I said, I would personally be going for sacred fires here. Yeah, I would personally be going for sacred fires here because if you burn, if you burn Swabber, it's not a threat. Good call. Expecting them to go for fly, also knowing that they're hole and they can't really touch you. It's just. I mean, it's fun to throw back and like just, you know, I'm a competitive player, but it's always nice to go back and watch things that were like, not obviously not to the same level that it is today. I just appreciate it. First off, I love the animation. I truly do. Ooh, big damage, big damage, big damage. And you all, you actually lose nothing by going for curse again, because if they cover, who cares? And flies do turn move, so. Finally, Super Shadow 493 figures out, hey, they can't really touch me. Let me go for Sacred Fires, which have a 50% chance to burn. There you go. Exactly. And we do see a curse, so uh, that's a good play again. Taking advantage of the fact that the opponent might expect them to... Uh, or they might expect them to go for the Recover or whatever again. So that was a good Sacred Fire. That was a really good turn. Pretty sure the T-Train comes out and walls everything to hell him back. Because this was before Entei even had something to deal with it. Alright, we're going to see another Fly come out. Are we going to see another curse? Yeah. Okay. So I don't think at this point Swampert actually picks up a KO, but I could be wrong. It is cool though to see uh, the Mewtwo be forced out because of Dust Tox. And not because it's like Quiver Dance, Shield, Dust Crap. Which, I just want to note, that last generation of Rambats, that Quiver Dance, Dust Tox, is very annoying. And the fact that Burn does 12% um, instead of 6% is really big here. Of course, if this Swampert was Waterfall, it would have been game already. Oh my god, it's Rest, Curse, Avalanche. Yo. Well. That's a wrap. We're going to switch out a little bit. Fire Dog comes out. Stone Edge trying to predict Heatran because you can't really do anything else. But you can't even deal with the Pokemon in front of you. And we're going to see Swampert eventually wake up and go right for Earthquake there. So at this point, it's kind of... It's over. 
There's no way Mewtwo KOs. You see a Focus Blast come out. That's not an Energy Ball though. It does hit him on the better. Did you not have Psychic? Doesn't matter though. Earthquake's going to be able to deal with this Pokemon too. So Swapper is going to uh, basically be able to deal. Basically be able to clear up. Oh my god. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, we got to put that. Terra's open the ground. That's one of my most memorable times. Like, that's one of the most memorable sayings ever. And it's the whole. So, obviously, again, Shadow are not pure Monta. There are four Pokemon Virginia and then two Wild Card. Well, I have another challenge. The challenge not too long after Shadow did, but I'm just uploading this now. As you can see, he broke two rather important rules Uber Claws and Type Claws. I just saw his team. I immediately went to record it since I predicted it would be an interesting battle and see how I would fare. A closer look at my opponent's team, which is just an in game hard gold soul server team with maybe a few modifications here and there. But yeah. Um, overall, it doesn't matter right here. The hole is obviously going to attack, and then Swamper is going to beat it. If not if not this turn, it will beat it in the next turn. Uh, again, I just want to show this because it's a good throwback. I had legitimately been asking. like I, don't, I said I didn't care. If you gave me Pokemon Battle Revolution battles, I'll do it. We can watch it. But I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Aim Higher. Uh, again, the goal is to show your guys' battles off, show some cool things, show some good moves, talk about where plays could have been better, and, you know, go from there. So, again, if you guys did enjoy, feel free to leave a like, subscribe. You can also check out everybody. I'll leave their, uh, I'll leave their links down below. I'll also link this battle as well. Uh, that way you guys can get it too uh, from PokeWorld DP. Pokey World TP. Feel free to keep submitting stuff. And again, I'm gonna be doing some stuff on my. Uh, I'll be doing some stuff on my Twitter, or excuse me, on my Twitch as well. So feel free to follow me at Twitch.tv/PokeyGame, where I'll be doing a lot of these live. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one. Goodbye, my friends.